So for a while there, I was thinking, wow, Minnesota Vikings, 3-0. and That's a really cool story. Yeah. And look at this. The New Orleans Saints, 3-0. and That's another <laughs> unexpected cool story. Yeah. Well, that story never happened because the Eagles were able to come back. They snapped their four-game road losing streak. That does include uh, the playoffs. And so it was, it was a – I turned it on late. Getting yeah, back from Minneapolis, right. and I saw it wasn't like, what you expected. I was like seven six. Yeah, I was like New Orleans Saints don't score less than forty. I don't know what's going on right here. Um, what'd you make of kind of the what, the flow of the game, yeah. and then how the Eagles were able to? I, I mean, it was it, it was totally a defensive struggle, and I I, I think where. I look at it, too, and, like, defense is struggling a game where the Saints at one point got down there in field goal range, went forward on fourth down. I'm going, we haven't drove the ball all game. Let's just take the six points. Let's do that. Either way, they'd go for it. They didn't make it, right? But it was. It was, it was defensive struggle. But I, I think here would be my headline as far as just the, the main thing. You know I think still – I still think highly of the New Orleans Saints. The offense obviously didn't get going. We know that today. And that's where I want to – my main headline with them would be – Take a deep breath, Eagles fans. The Eagles, when I see the Eagles at their best, I just go, wow, right? Whether it's week one on offense and some of the plays they made against Green Bay and the explosive they were, and even today, I worried about their defense. Their defense hasn't been great in the first two games, and I'm going, oh, man, now they got to deal with this offensive line and Derek Carr's hot and a great play action passing attack. They were dominant today. They were dominant up front. The D-line was phenomenal. So I think that's the first thing. The potential of the Eagles, to me, blows me out of the water. Have they put it together for four games on both – I mean, four quarters with both sides of the ball yet? No. But you see little tidbits to go, wow, this is like five series in a row. The defense looks amazing. And though, even though the offense struggled, once it gets going, you just go, wow. You know, there's such big-time potential, not only because of the O-line. Hurts is damn good. We know A.J. Brown's not even playing. They had O-linemen hurt today. Saquon is a superstar, as we know, but it's going to be even more than what everybody's going to know because you're going to see with now he's got space, he's going to be unstoppable that way. So even though it was 15-12, right backs against the wall wasn't perfect wasn't pretty and Jalen Hurts is definitely turning the ball over too much right now there is still a top end play that I see from Philadelphia that I uh, go wow and really they should be three and oh come on we know they should they screwed up last Monday night and uh you know, but that, that of course, probably yeah. a little, little extra fire under them this week uh, to make sure they pulled this one out in the Super Bowl. Well, you can say they should have been 3-0 and and, and they should have won this game because there are going to be Saints fans that say, well, 3rd and 16, three New Orleans Saints run into, run each, into other. each other. Dallas Goddard, I mean, the miracle Unforgivable. of all miracles. Right. So how does that happen? Yeah. How, what, 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 what caused that to happen? It's two crossing routes, and Dallas Goddard had a phenomenal day. So I just want to say that, too. He yeah. was Dallas Goddard and Barkley. They were carrying the show, especially in the second half. Goddard made big plays, but crossing routes and that thing, what you saw from Goddard, was a problem for New Orleans all day. They had the right call there. Now, it was two little short crossers. I don't know if they wanted to pass it off, Ahmed, and go, wait, you know, wait for this crosser, you wait for it, or you stay with it. But the other part of it is they had the safety cutting across who was going to help on Goddard. And they all ran into each other. Like you said, Mo, Larry, and Curly looking ridiculous out there. And that ended up Goddard with a big play down the sidelines. And that was a big moment of the football game overall. But, I mean, an amazing game in general. It really was. I mean, for a low scoring, not a lot of points being, being had out there. Philadelphia was the better team on the field. I'll say that. They moved the ball more consistently throughout the day. Um but but then again, found themselves down late in the game and answered the bell. And, and Saquon Barkley, of course, was was amazing and, and squashing the Saints' hopes and coming back. So Dallas Goddard, those 170 yards receiving, uh, career high, 117 of those were after the catch, yeah. including 53 above expected. So next gen stats would be like, we didn't expect that. Yeah, good job, Dallas Goddard. Uh, he's he's one of the better tight ends in football that probably doesn't get. You know, though it's not the first names out of your mouth, Definitely right? Not, it's yeah. not the first names, but it should be the second few names that come out of your mouth. He's not a great run blocker. That's not his forte. But in the past game, as you can see, he can run. He's rangy. He's long. He adjusts to the ball. He's perfect for what they want in their offense. And, yeah, the game, I mean, it had a little of everything, too. Yeah. The other thing is, like, you know, uh, the, the, the when the Eagles turned it over, Hurts throws an interception. He had a bad fumble. The defense held up. They let up no points with those short fields there. So that was big, right? One of them was down in the end zone, which was a bad interception by Jalen Hurts. There, you know, 
I do think there was some curious coaching calls. Again, I'll say, you know me, I'm not into the fourth, fourth and one stuff. And especially in not games necessarily when it's like it's a field goal game. What are we doing here? The Eagles definitely had some fourth downs where, yeah, they could have kicked a field goal. They went for it right before half. That wasn't good. Um, uh, the Eagles did it again in the third quarter, had a good drive. They're in field goal range. They go for it. You know, they're a little, I guess is what I would say, and this goes back to Monday night, and I said this a little bit uh, obnoxiously cocky at times, mm-hmm. which isn't a bad thing always in football. But I think when you, like I said last week, when you go for the haymaker all the time, sometimes you get punched back in the mouth and all of a sudden you're on the canvas, right? And that's just what I worry about them a little. I don't think they need to take some of the chances they take, I guess is what I'm saying. I think they're so good that if they just continue to play, that their greatness of their team and what they are will rise above the rest and they'll find ways to win games. They got dudes all over the field, even without A.J. Brown out there. One more thing we'll show you. It was Saquon Barkley. Still got the speed. He got those injuries back in the day, but he still got the speed. Uh, Next-gen staff with his top speed on that 65-yard run was 21.66 miles per hour. That is the second fastest play by a ball carrier this season and fastest on a run play. He was pulling away from the from the DBs there. He, uh, he is... He is still football. one of the most yeah good at football and one of the most explosive players in football and one of the most fun to watch in space. And he is hitting the hole this year. I would say he looks like he's running angry. You know, I think people in New York got on him at times because they were like, oh, he's running tentative. And I want to be like, well, when there's no holes, you're going to run a little tentative, right? Now he's got a little confidence and he's seeing holes and he's trusting what he's seeing and he's just hitting it full steam ahead. So that's what's great to see from him in general and what he's doing there. But I do think the story, the, besides him, mm-hmm. the star of the day was the Vic Fangio defense. And that's why I say do be patient. It's a new coordinator on both sides of the ball. We've seen some positives here in, in, in all of the games. Let's see if they can put it together going forward. Uh, but I think a big clutch win for Philadelphia on the road and, and kind of erases at least the stigma or the bad taste in the mouth from last week. Yo, yo, homies. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's time. The NFL season is here on Chris Sims Unbuttoned. You can hit subscribe to get all the weekly picks, plus our Sunday recaps as the games are happening. Oh, you know it. Nobody does that better than us. Thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe. Peace out. We'll see you next time on Unbuttoned.